Complex fractions are fractions within fractions. For example, here I have two fractions added in the numerator, two fractions subtracted in the denominator, and the whole thing itself creates a fraction as well. So how would I simplify this fraction? Because whenever you have fractions within fractions, it's not considered simplified. You either treat the top and the bottom, in other words, the numerator and the denominator separately, or you can use the other method of the LCM to wipe out the fractions. We'll look at both methods with this example. So for method one, I'm going to look at the top and the bottom separately. I'm going to call this one, call that two, and when I'm done, I'm going to divide one by two. So I need to get the numerator to be one fraction and I'm going to need a common denominator of 4, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom of this first fraction by 4. That's going to give me 2 fourths plus 3 fourths, which is 5 fourths. So we're good with that. We did the top. For the denominator, I'm going to take 1 half and subtract 3 fourths from it. Again, I need a common denominator of 4, so 2 and 2 get multiplied there, and I end up with do down here 2 fourths minus 3 fourths which is negative 1 fourth so I got one fraction there so with method 1 I have the top done the bottom done now I'm gonna divide the two so 1 divided by 2 basically top fraction combined into 1 divided by bottom fraction combined into 1 so 5 fourths divided by the second guy negative one-fourth. Well that's just two fractions, let's multiply by the reciprocal. And now we can see there's going to be some reducing going on. So our final answer looks like it's going to be a five over negative one, which is just negative five, and our overall complicated complex fraction reduced to a negative five. For method two, we said we're going to use the LCM to wipe out fractions. So what do I mean with that? I've recopied the complex fraction here. I look at the first denominator, second, third, fourth, and I use the LCM of 4. And I use the LCM of 4 by multiplying the top and bottom of the big fraction by 4 over 4, which is essentially a 1. Well, I multi when I multiply top and bottom by 4, the 4 gets distributed into both pieces on top, and this 4 gets distributed into both pieces in the bottom. So essentially what I have going on is 4 times a half plus 4 times 3 fourths all over 4 times a half minus 4 times 3 fourths. And when I do that, I get some cancellation going on. This turns into a 2, this guy is gone, this turns into a 2, this guy is gone completely, and I end up with 2 plus 3 on top, and in the bottom I have a 2 minus a 3, which is going to give me, I'm at a 3 on top, which is going to give me 2 plus 3, 5, 2 minus 3, negative 1, which is ultimately the negative 5 that I had gotten before. So whether I do the first method where I treat them separately or the second method where I treat them all together, I still get the same answer. So for part A, when I simplify, I basically have my top fraction, let's call that 1, divided by my bottom fraction, which is 2. And this is actually simple because both are combined into one fraction that I don't have to add together, so I'm just going to say top divided by bottom, and then I'm going to use multiply by the reciprocal. These are all monomials joined with multiplications, so all I got to do is reduce and get rid of common factors. These guys go away. 4 and 2 reduce into a 2 on top. This A and this A go away, and it looks like I don't have any more common factors, so I end up with 2b squared upstairs, actually no, b cubed, because I have, remember, a b here as well, and this b squared here. 
So b cubed total on top over, um, these are all 1's, just a 1, so my final answer looks like it's a 2b cubed. Let's look at part b, which also has 1 fraction already combined on top, divided by a bottom fraction combined already in the bottom in the denominator. So 4y over x minus y divided by 1 over x squared minus y squared. We switch that into a multiplying by the reciprocal, so we have x squared minus y squared over 1. Now I need to see if I can factor and reduce further, and it looks like I could factor this second numerator, it's a difference of squares, x plus y, x minus y, all over 1. Now I can reduce any factors that are in common, which looks like this guy and this guy and there's nothing else that reduces so my final answer is just a 4y upstairs with the x plus y. So that's okay or if you distribute it this is okay also. Both are acceptable. This of course is in factored form. Okay this next example again I have a top that's a binomial divided by a denominator or bottom that's actually two pieces with a subtraction sign. So if I can, with method one, let's look at it with method one, I can say the top is okay, the bottom or the denominator I'm going to combine by getting a common denominator. The LCM here is 2x, so this guy is missing a 2, this guy is missing an x, and I end up with 2 over 2x minus x over 2x, which turns into a 2x, combine the numerators, 2 minus x. Now that I have that, I can say 1 divided by 2. 1 is 2 minus x as a binomial, divided by 2 minus x over 2x, which was the denominator. Again, I'm going to go ahead and change that into a multiplication. And notice what happens. It looks like we have two factors in common, one on top, one in the bottom. So our final answer is just 2x. So that's one way I could do this problem. If I want to use method 2, I would need to involve the numerator and the denominator right away. So we have an LCM still of 2x, but this time I'm going to treat the top and bottom all together. This is my big bar of division. I'm going to say multiply the top by the LCM, multiply the bottom by the LCM. So basically I'm going to distribute this into the whole thing when I'm ready and distribute this into each of these guys. So for right now I'm going to leave the top as is. 2x times 2 minus x over. I'll write the 2x with the 1 minus x and the 2x with the 1 over 2. And then these guys are gone and these guys are gone. So we end up with what I had on top over in the bottom. I got a 2 left minus an x left. And notice these guys are the same. So again, ultimately I end up with the same answer of 2x. They were slightly different methods, but I both, both times I got the same value of 2x. I'm going to go ahead and use method 2 on this one. So the LCM is clearly x squared for all the denominators. Bottom's going to get an x squared top is going to get an x squared and this x squared is essentially going to go and apply to each of these guys. So notice these x squares got distributed and I gave each chunk or each term the x squared that it needed. Now some cancellations should occur. This guy goes away with that and I have an x. This guy completely goes away with that. This guy goes away with that. I have an x left over and this guy completely goes away with that guy. So ultimately I have an x in the first term and a plus 2 after that. 
downstairs I have an x and then a minus 1. Both binomials are not factorable further, and I'm done. So pretty much in one step, I was able to simplify this complex fraction using method 2. Part E, again, I have a top and a bottom. And before I do anything, I notice these denominators are the same, so might as well combine the tops and make it a little bit simpler. 1 plus 1 is 2 over x minus 4. All of that divided by 1 minus 1 over x plus 4. At this point, it's your choice if you want to use method 1 or if you want to use method 2. I'm going to go ahead and practice method 1. So this is fraction 1. It's already combined into 1. Let's go deal with fraction 2 and then divide them. So fraction 2 is 1 minus 1 over x plus 4. The LCM is x plus 4 because this guy is over 1. So x plus 4 downstairs, x plus 4 upstairs and that gives me x plus 4 over x plus 4 minus 1 over x plus 4. Denominators are the same. I have x plus 4. Let's combine the tops. x, 4 minus 1 is plus 3. So now I have the numerator 2 over x minus 4 divided by the denominator which is in one fraction form and I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. And when I do that, it looks like there is no reduction to be done. These guys are completely different, so I can't reduce them. And I'm just going to combine them into one fraction and leave it as is because nothing cancels or reduces any further. Let's look at one last one to simplify. Uh, I want you to be careful that these are linked on top and these are linked in the bottom so that even though these guys look the same, I can't really go ahead and say cancel the top and bottom because they are linked. What I can do is use the LCM and method 2. And the LCM for all denominators seem to require a P and a Q and the highest powers are squares for both. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom of the big fraction by this LCM of p squared q squared which is going to go into each one of these terms. So what we basically did was we multiplied by this LCM and all four terms got the LCM. Now my goal is to do any cancellation that occurs. p squares are gone, one of these q's are gone, q squares are gone and one of the p's are gone p squares are gone and one of the q's are gone. And over here, q squares are gone and one of the p's from the top are gone. So ultimately, I'm left with a q plus p upstairs and a q minus p downstairs. And again, since these guys are linked with a plus and a minus, I cannot separate them. I leave them as they are. They don't factor and reduce any further, and I'm done.